All right, now as soon as Samsung started rolling out the One UI 5.0 stable version on the S22 series, they have also updated the GoodLock application and now we have got all the modules working on the One UI 5.0. Now if I remember correctly, after the One UI 3.0 or 4.0 release, we really had to wait for a few days for the GoodLock support for some of the modules. But this time, we have got all these modules updated and working on One UI 5.0 stable release as soon as it arrived. Kudos to Samsung for doing this. Now along with this update, there is one thing which is really exciting to see is this all new module called Camera Assistant which Samsung has just released. If you remember, there was some news about some of the new modules or the new features coming to GoodLock and here it is. We have got the first new module, the Camera Assistant, which is going to be really useful to customize the camera settings as per your preferences. As you can see, this is the first iteration of this application and the version number is 1.0.00.4. Now without reading the change log, let me directly open this application. As you can see, we have got a bunch of options here or toggles here to enable or disable some of these features. The first one is Auto HDR, capture more details in the bright and dark areas of your pictures and videos. If you enable this option, the HDR will turn on or off automatically depending on the lighting conditions to improve the picture and video quality. The second one is Soften Pictures. If you enable this, this feature will smooth out the sharp edges and textures in the photo mode pictures. Now this was anyways done by the AI whenever you take an image, but here we have got a dedicated toggle for this feature. Then we have got auto lens switching. It lets the camera pick the best lens based on the zoom, lighting and distance to the subject. Now this feature is available on iOS as well. We have an option to automatically switch the lenses there. If you bring the subject very close to the phone's lenses, it is going to switch to macro mode. Likewise, it will switch back to wide angle or the telephoto lens. Next one is video recording in photo mode. You can touch and hold the shutter button to record videos in photo mode. When you enable this, you can just touch and hold on the shutter button to record the videos in photo mode. If I'm not wrong, this feature to turn on the video mode by pressing and holding the shutter button was already available, but we have got a toggle now to turn it on or off. Correct me if I'm wrong here. The next one is number of pictures after timer. This is certainly a very, very useful feature. Whenever we set a timer, let's say three seconds, five seconds or whatever, and tap on the shutter button, the phone was able to click just one image. But with this feature, we can increase the number of pictures to be taken to three, five or seven whenever we set the timer for taking the pictures. This is fantastic. The next one is faster shutter. It speeds up the shutter by capturing fewer frames this may decrease picture quality. Now I did enable this feature and tried it out, but I did not see any change in the shutter speed. Maybe it depends on the lighting conditions or something. I'm not very sure. I did try this on the night mode as well, and it was almost the same. Next one is the camera timeout. Now we have got one minute, two minute, five minutes, and 10 minutes options here. As this option suggests, the camera is going to stay on for the number of minutes that you have set whenever you open the camera. If you set the timer for one minute, the viewfinder will stay on for one minute. If you set it for two minutes, it's gonna stay on for two minutes. That is how this is going to work. Now, just to give you an example of where this feature can be used, let's say if you want to capture an image of a bird or an animal, and if you're waiting for the best shot, you might want to keep the camera on for long so you can set the camera timeout using this option. Okay, now the last feature is clean preview on HDMI displays. It says show the camera preview without setting or buttons on HDMI connected displays. Let me tell you what is this all about. As you can see, when I open the camera, we have got all these information on the left hand side and on the right hand side on the viewfinder. We have got all these camera options, the grid lines, and we have got all these options on the left hand side, the settings option. We've got the shutter button, camera switch button. So all these are available on the viewfinder. Now, if at all you're connecting this phone to a monitor through HDMI to see the viewfinder, you will not see all these buttons and information on the preview on a bigger screen. It will be a clean camera view without all this information which you are going to see on the bigger screen or on the monitor. That is what it is. I will make a dedicated video for this and show you how this works. So stay tuned for that video and be sure to subscribe to the channel as well. Now these are some of the features that we have got on camera assistant module. I am really happy to see this module and I would love to see more and more features being added on this particular module. And I wish Samsung releases more modules on the good lock. Now you let me know what do you think about this module? How is it? Are you going to use it? Drop a comment and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to watch more contents on the good lock modules. And if you want to know your phone better, this is the channel you need to subscribe to. So go ahead, smash the subscribe button and give this video a like if you find it useful. Thanks for watching. My name is Salian signing off. Cheers. Bye-bye. Like